okay. Uh, Alright, uh, I just came from there last time. Uh, I think I saved. Uh, right, I'm chasing after the uh, little kid, uh, Tala, I think was his name. Oh, if those hit me, I wonder... Okay. Maybe that did damage or something. Yeah, uh, maybe a bit. I don't know. Okay, that was kind of a... That was a neat uh, start of a battle. Okay, Chrono didn't uh, go first then, so it must uh, it must be part of the speed algorithm or whatever at the beginning. I had thought that maybe he just like always goes first or something, but yeah, it must just be an effect of the uh, speed algorithm that he usually ends up going first. Must be the kid. Okay, I hope this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, good. They're they're not hitting too hard. I was worried that this was a uh, end game kind of thing I had accidentally wandered into. The two girls do seem to hit a lot harder with spells than with their uh, regular attacks. I guess the good thing to do is just target one of them first. They seem to be doing, like, combo attacks mostly, so... Okay. This is enough.
I should probably heal everyone. He, yeah, he doesn't seem terribly strong, even combined. Although that, uh, that was actually, uh... Luca can't take too many more of them. It is actually, it does seem to be pretty worth it to do the uh, combo attacks. Okay, well, uh, it's kind of annoying, but I didn't really lose any progress, so. through the uh, first fight again though. Yeah, I, I don't really care for multi-form fights. Uh, exa it's exactly because of this, because you, you, know, you lose the actual hard part and then you just have to grind your way through the easy part again. have to be more careful with healing uh, as soon as we get down to you know less than I don't know, 150 anybody then we heal So it, it uses different amounts of MP on uh, the different characters. Thank you. 
Yeah, it would be really nice to know how much HP this guy had. Like, I think uh, the individual ones, they maybe had, I don't know, 1,500? Uh, it's time to heal. I should probably use an ether or something on Chrono. Yeah, I guess I should, uh, I don't know, maybe start going through uh, some more games. Uh, let's see, NES games. Uh, I actually played a couple NES games this year. Uh, that was what wiped the party last time. Yeah, so the uh, first NES game I played was uh, Shatterhand. Uh, it's a, you know, side-scrolling kind of like a Ninja Gaiden style game. Uh, and yeah, I played it uh, back towards the beginning of the year. Uh, it's first on the list on NES games, so it would have been much earlier in the year. Um, and yeah, it was, it was very good. Um, it was still pretty difficult, but I did manage to beat it anyways. Uh, so it is like a beatable game. Uh, yeah, there's a. I think there's a bunch of different levels you can choose from. Uh, you can do them kind of in any order, so that was nice. Uh, and there's a. Yeah, there's a bunch of different power ups you can get. Um, like you you know you upgrade your weapon and uh, you've got like a little. Uh, I think it was a little like robot thing that hovers around you and shoots. Uh, I think that's what it was, and uh, yeah, you can upgrade it differently too, so... Uh, yeah, it was a pretty good game. Um, yeah, it was back towards the beginning of the year though, so I don't... Uh, and it wasn't like super amazing or anything, so I don't really have strong memories of it. Um, okay, we're going into talking. Ah, uh, okay. I'm guessing we take the Masamune and give it to Frog. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was kind of strange to be getting, like, a super powerful weapon early in the game. That's why I was kind of, you know, like, okay, is this, like, am I going to lose this fight all the time because I'm just not supposed to be here yet? But, uh, right, so I gotta get this fixed or whatever. The map really reminds me of the uh, the map in Magi Nation on like the Game Boy Color. Uh, it's the like exact same scale and everything. Well, I like that everybody. Uh, that's a nice touch. Everybody like gets out of bed and puts on their hats and stuff. Uh, okay. Uh, I got the Masamune. Um. 
or half of it anyways. Right, that's just the girl who says she's protecting the forest or whatever. Um, it was the cursed woods here. I didn't. I never went in here. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, here's frog. stuff I can take. Um, okay. Uh, maybe if I check in on him again. Uh, I should have probably got that chest first. I didn't realize it was a chest when I first went in there. Uh, okay. not going to do anything. Oh, uh, okay. I've got the, uh, what was it, the Hero's Crest or whatever, so I can take that to Frog, I guess, and then he will, you know, cheer up or whatever and come join the party. Okay, so I'm gonna, wait a minute, you. What is that? Okay. Yeah, that's the thing I saw before in one of the other areas. And I wondered uh, what exactly it was. I don't know if you're... Maybe later in the game you get something that lets you interact with it. Or it's just a neat easter egg or something. That's kind of neat that the, the frogs and the snakes are not like on the same team. So I guess uh, next NES game I played was uh, Doodle World. Uh, I did a video on that. It was, I don't know, a neat little game. Uh, not too much more to say on it. Um, Metroid, which I talked about. Uh, next was Gun Knack. Uh, this is a, it's a pretty good uh, space shooter game. Uh, it's not 
nothing really special about it. It's got kind of a, a nice art style, kind of a cartoony... I don't know. Maybe similar to, like, uh, Proteus, but not... Not quite as wild as that, but it's still, you know, it's a little bit, kind of a bit towards that. Uh, Dorino, uh, Medina. I gotta go Medina. Uh, where was Medina? Um, that's the Alcure, yeah. Um, Is this Medina? Residence. Bruce. Alright, uh, Melchior's the old weapons dude, uh, west of Monster Town, I believe. So it means I gotta go up here, uh, I guess. I hope I'm right, otherwise this is going to be a huge waste of time. Uh, anyways, yeah, gun knack. Uh, it was a pretty simple, I don't know, nothing too special space shooter. It was pretty good. Um, I'm not like super into space shooters or anything. I've only played a handful of them and uh, usually they're just too hard for me and I kind of give up. Uh, this ended up being... I, I did manage to beat it. Um, the last level or so, the difficulty really spikes, and I had to do that like several times to get through it. Uh, if I recall correctly, there is unlimited continues, so you once you die, you just kind of start back at the beginning of that level. Uh, so yeah, you can get through it eventually, but uh, it is fairly difficult. Er, it's... It's not difficult for a space shooter, but I still found it somewhat difficult. Uh, right, uh, this would be Medina? No. Alright, good. Now he'll fix it. Right, because we picked it up in 600 and now we're in 1000, so he's, uh... Something about him. Really? It does seem kind of strange that a stone that was common enough to be used as money cannot be found now. Ah, uh, but whatever. Um, I guess off to... 60,000 BC or whatever. Uh, so anyways, after Gunnak, I played through most of uh, Faxanadu. Yeah, I played through. I played through most of it. I got like I don't know, maybe half or two thirds of the way through. Uh, I just kind of I don't know. I ran out of steam for it. It was pretty good, but I didn't really like love it or anything. Uh, so events have started here. Yeah, but it was it was pretty good. Um, I really liked Zelda 2. That's why I ended up uh, playing it. 
uh, because they're kind of the same style, you know, side-scrolling, platforming, action, RPG. Uh, they were, I don't know, strangely common on the NES, and they don't seem to really make them that much anymore. But yeah, there are quite a few like that, like, uh, I don't know, I guess that, like Rygar, Battle for Olympus, um, there's a Rambo game, uh, that and Zelda, um, and there's like, I don't know, a couple more, uh, Battle at, Clash at Demon Head, I think it's kind of like that. Yeah, it was it was pretty good. It was a little bit linear for what I was expecting. I had kind of hoped it was going to be a bit more adventure-y. Uh, nice, I get, uh, what is it, Layla, I think? Or... Yeah, we're getting pretty close to, I think, where I've, you know, gotten to. Um, the farthest I've gotten, I have gotten like Frog and uh, whatever her name is. Uh, but that's pretty much where I ended up quitting. Uh, so, anyway, anyways, after Fex Xanadu, um, I beat the first Castlevania. I don't remember what exactly was the reason for playing. Well, I guess, you know, it's one of those uh, kind of like really popular old, you know, NES games that uh, tons of people seem to have had. And I just, I never had it as a kid, so I, you know, kind of missed, uh, missed out on that. I doubt I really would have... Uh, played it that much as a kid though, because I was really bad at games and kind of gave up quick. Ah, uh, Ayla. Ayla. Would have been a neat touch to just have like all these enemies like dead on the ground as you come through here. Like she just went through and slaughtered them all on the way. Uh, yeah, so Castlevania. Um, yeah, it was a very popular, you know, game and everybody talks about it and stuff. And I just I've never played it, so I thought it was a good idea to go through it. Uh, and yeah, it was. It was pretty good. Um, was there was that insane difficulty spike though? I'm sure everybody who's played it knows. But once you get, I think it's like the Frankenstein boss. The difficulty just shoots through the roof. It's really kind of ridiculous. Like the first few levels, there you can get through them pretty easily. You know, you die a couple times, but you learn what's happening, and then you, you know, you get it and you go through. And it's not too difficult. But as soon as you get to, like, the Frankenstein boss, it just gets insanely difficult. You just start dying constantly. And, uh... Yeah, from then on, I... I don't, it took forever to get through that. Um, yeah, fortunately, again, I think it's... Yeah, it, it has unlimited uh, continues or whatever, so it's another game you can get through. Play it enough. And I was on the emulator, of course, so I could just, uh, you know, I'd make a few attempts and then uh, save and then just kind of come back a couple days later, make a few more attempts. Uh... And so on, which, uh, you know, I didn't have to just start from the beginning every time I had to, like, turn off the NES or whatever.
Uh, she the she's the chief, I guess. Gotta wait, I guess. Oh, I thought maybe I could dance here. Uh, there was that one other spot where you can hit the face buttons to dance, but uh, I guess not. gonna be a uh, okay Maybe they were used as money after this or something, or before this, or whatever. Because it's like she's the only one who's got one, they're not really money. Uh, okay, so yeah, we need to bring Isla. Uh, and I guess Marl for her healing. That would be a good idea for her. Oh yeah, she doesn't have magic yet. I'll, I'll give that a try for now. Um,
Hmm. Uh... Yeah, it must be up there. I seem to remember when I was here before, there was no, uh... Fight him. Yeah, on the other hand, her auto-attacking, that does, uh... You know, ease the, uh... You know, the burden of me having to select attacks and stuff, uh, on time. Because even though I am doing the wait, uh, setting. It's still beneficial, I think, to attack as quick as possible as soon as the bar fills. And she is hitting really hard, so... It seems like it might be worth it. At least, I don't know, until she gets some text, and then it might, uh, might be worth removing it. Uh, at least... She can't use uh, Kiss outside of battle. If she could, then there'd be like no harm, uh, because I could always use her to heal outside of battle. Uh, yeah, so I don't Castlevania. Um, yeah, I do. That's another one I intend to play the rest of the Castlevania games sometime, uh, like the NES and the Super Nintendo ones, because those are ones I never played before. Oh, okay, she just learned Kiss. Uh, ah, and she can use it outside of battle now, okay. Okay. It's strange that she can use it on herself. That seems like it would have been, you know, a neat touch to have it that she... It doesn't work if you use it on herself, but, uh... Oh well. We are much stronger now. These guys aren't quite as dangerous. Uh, yeah, so with Castlevania, yeah, I, I haven't played any of the other, any of the NES or Super Nintendo ones until now. Uh, they, or most of them actually. Uh, I've played the Game Boy Advance ones. Uh, I actually got the game, the first Game Boy Advance one, uh, Circles of the Moon. I got that with my Game Boy Advance when I got it. Uh, along with there was like a Nintendo Power guide they put out when the Game Boy Advance came out that had guides for it was like Circles of the Moon, uh, F Zero, I think maybe a Yoshi game or something, and uh, one other game. They put out a guide a guide for those four, and I got it. Uh, but I think that was probably partially why I got the Castlevania game was because I could just use the guide. Because again, at that time I was just I didn't want to get lost, I didn't want to adventure, and I was really bad. I mostly just liked RPGs back then. Uh, but yeah, I, I did play through it and liked it quite a bit, and since then I've played most of the other, like, later Castlevanias. Uh, the, uh, the other Game Boy Advance ones, uh, the DS ones. Uh, I've played Symphony of the Night, uh, that was really good. Yeah, mo most of them were fairly good. I remember not really liking Order of Ecclesia. I think it was... Uh, yeah, I don't know. It was too... I don't know, linear, and I didn't really like how it was broken up into stages. Uh, be here. Well, I think... Most of the enemies stay dead anyways, so I shouldn't have to fight too many on the way out. Yeah, so sometime I want to play the other the other ones, um, especially 2, because again, like, you know, I hadn't played Zelda 2 or Metroid for a long time, because those are games that a lot of people say, oh, they're, they're really bad and cryptic and, uh, you know, you need a guide to play them and you shouldn't play them these days and stuff. 
Uh, but I ended up really liking both of them. So I'm hoping you know, Castlevania 2 is the same way, where I'll just end up really liking it. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll see. It seems most of the enemies are actually uh, back, but uh, they're not as dangerous now, so it's not too bad. Uh, so after that, I played uh, Iron Tank, The Invasion of Normandy. This is kind of a... Mm, like... It's kind of a shooter, but uh, you've got a bit more control, like there's actually a map and you, you drive your tank around and there's uh, like soldiers and other enemy tanks and stuff uh, going around. Um, you actually run over uh, enemy soldiers with your tank to restore health, which is kind of funny. Uh, and it was pretty good. It does get very difficult towards the end. You've got, yeah, you collect different ammo for different weapons and stuff, so you can switch uh, freely between different types of weapons depending on what you're uh, fighting. Uh, yeah, it, I don't know, it was a pretty good game. Uh, not like super amazing, but uh, yeah, it was good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go heal. Uh, so that's her hut. Three each of any two. So, cuddle. Okay, so you can't give two of the same. If I give uh, Petal and Fang. Okay. Petal and Horn. Petal and Feather. Uh, I should have checked to see if, uh, like, Petal and Fang does the same thing as Fang and Petal. Oh well. Fang and Horn. Okay, it doesn't need to be showing all this. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I only have uh, enough feathers. Oh, I could have just checked this. Okay. So ruby vests and ruby helms would be... Uh, good to get. I'm just looking for the uh, come from meeting uh, went south for uh, forest maze of course. 
Right. I, I forgot about going in there because I had gone in there and there was, uh, there was nothing. Uh, so I kind of just left and forgot about it. I hope this isn't too maze-like, at least. Oh, yeah, so what, uh... Alright, last NES game I played was, uh, Kickle Cubicle. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty good, uh, I think somewhat well-known kind of puzzle game. Uh, it's a bit, a little bit action. Uh, oriented. Like, there's a lot of puzzle games where they're completely, like, static or turn-based or whatever, and you can, you know, if you just kind of, you can stop and think at any time and stuff, but these are, they're a bit more, uh, you know, you've got to actually, like, move and avoid enemies and stuff while you're kicking blocks around. Uh, yeah, you can, like, freely make blocks vice, and then you've got to kick them into, like, holes in the ground, or like empty spaces that just have water in them in order to make bridges, and then you can go around and collect all the items. Uh, but you can also freely like break them or, uh, you know, freeze enemies and stuff like that. So it's, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, one of those block pushing games, but uh, a bit more advanced. Uh, and it's, it's not terribly difficult either. either. It's fairly easy to beat, and I think it only took me a couple hours to beat it. You know, it's maybe, what, three or four hours to beat it, I think? Uh, yeah, this is this is what I don't really like, is uh, when it's always kind of hard to tell, like, where you can actually walk. Like, I don't know, this, this doesn't stand out much to me, this uh, tree. And I'm guessing there's gonna be like a gap here in the the wood or something. I don't know. I don't know if maybe my eyes are just bad, but uh, stuff like this always just kind of blurs together for me. What I find like a lot of kind of more modern games are really bad at is uh, I don't know. They try and go so heavy with the detail that. Uh, nothing really stands out. Like, I find Dark Souls 1 and 2, they're fine, like, I have no problem with them, but, uh, once you get to 3 and Bloodborne, well, Bloodborne was where I first really noticed it. They really tried to show off, like, how much, like, garbage they could put on screen at once, and so everything just kind of blends together, because it's just a constant mess of things. Yeah, so I played a bunch of NES games. That was actually one of my most played uh, systems this year, aside from, yeah, maybe like that, Switch and PC. Uh, partially because I've just been, you know, reading about like NES programming and kind of just doing it a bit myself. Uh, I don't really have anything uh, to show for it yet. I had kind of started doing a game, but uh, I think I aimed a bit too high. I had made, I was trying to make like a Zelda kind of, uh, yeah, like, basically like, uh, The Legend of Zelda. 
uh, which ended up being, it was a bit too much to make. So I've kind of scaled back and I'm working on like a, just a shooter right now. I don't know if I'll finish it, but it is, what is going on here? Uh, it is almost playable. I just then have to actually make like enemies and maps and, you know, the actual flow of the game and a title screen and stuff like that. But the actual kind of movement and all that is, you know, damage and stuff like that is kind of worked out. So I don't know if I'll ever finish it. I would like to sometime finish it and then, uh, you know, make a cartridge and play it on my old NES. That'd be really cool. Yeah, I, I really like NES programming. I think it's, uh, I don't know, uh, it's, I think it's a really good system for like a uh, kind of hobbyist, like retro programming, because it's at the point where it's powerful enough that you can actually do pretty much anything that you would want, uh, especially once you get into mappers and stuff. Uh, you know, you could make a shooting game or an RPG or, uh, you know, a, strategy game or tactical RPG or uh, you know a man you know a fair you know management kind of or sim game or whatever uh, you know sim city kind of thing uh, there's you know aside from like a first person shooter or whatever of course you can pretty much make whatever kind of game you want uh, and you know when you get into with the power of mappers you're not really limited in terms of storage anymore but it's also simple enough that, uh, you know, a single person can actually completely understand the system and you are limited enough that, uh, yeah, you are limited enough that, uh, you know, you're unlikely to just kind of get into the scope creep that, uh, happens so much with, uh, you know other systems and there's not like a million registers and all sorts of stuff to have to learn it's fairly it's fairly simple architecture Uh, plus, because, you know, it's, uh, all the games would have been written just in assembly language, so when you're, if you're hacking a game or modding it or whatever, and you're working with the assembly language, that is, like, you know, you're literally working with basically, you know, the same code that they would have been using to write it, so it's not as, uh, okay, I, I missed two chests there, oh well. Uh, there's probably nothing important in them. Yeah, so it's not too... Uh, uh, too much different, I don't know. You know, if you're working with, like, a modding, like, a current game, uh, I don't know, I haven't done much of that, but it seems like it would be a lot more, I don't know, strange, because it's you're getting a, a game that's written in, you know, C++ or whatever, and uh, that all gets uh, assembled down into the assembly language, and so your the the code you're looking at is isn't something that any of the developers ever saw, and it may be doing like strange things in order to optimize it and stuff. But with the NES, like you are, you're literally just looking at the actual uh, the actual code itself. I guess this shoots me out. Oh. Oh, it's an enemy. I thought it was like a bouncy thing. Oh. Okay. I guess that's part of the thing with missing those chests out there. Uh, the chests either would have had some healing item, which doesn't matter, 
they'd have had, I guess maybe a tab would be the most important thing to miss, uh, or the most, you know, the thing I would want to miss the least. Uh, or it has a weapon which, you know, either I'll buy the same weapon from the, the shop, or I'll buy a more powerful one from the next shop. Uh, so it's, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so yeah, it, it doesn't really matter that I missed the chest. Or it had an accessory, which I guess could be a unique accessory, which would be... I, I guess that would be the only thing I would want to not miss. Let's see, what's the games? I've got uh, Super Nintendo, I've got four games, kind of. I guess depending on how you uh, organize them, or how, how you count them. Uh, Super Mario RPG, which yeah, I played kind of beginning of the year for last year's year-end. Uh, in which I talked about a bunch. Um, Super Metroid, and like the Super Metroid Randomizer. Uh, then, like, the Link to the Past and Link to the Past Super Metroid Randomizer. And, uh, finally, the only new Super Nintendo game I played this year was, uh, Magical Poppin. Uh, I don't know why I played it. Um, I don't know what, what was the, uh, the trigger for that. Um, I, I don't know, I might have seen maybe like a YouTube video on it or something. Uh, I'm always watching I don't know, a bunch of different YouTube channels just going through old games and stuff. Uh, you know, SNES Drunk and uh, I think the uh, uh, Jeremy, I forget what his channel's name is. Uh, I don't know, the Game Historian, stuff like that. So, probably saw it on one of them. Oh, okay. I thought maybe I could just talk to him. Oh, I think they said they're weak to lightning. Oh, okay. Okay, so it doesn't do like a ton of damage to them or anything, but uh... It does kind of mess them up. Oh, I should probably heal, actually. I'm probably getting close to just walking through a door and getting in a boss fight. Yeah, so Magical Poplin, it was, I don't know, it was okay. It wasn't anything great. Um, it's a fairly simple, like, side-scrolling platformer. Uh, it had some kind of very, very light Metroidvania-style elements. Like, the individual levels are kind of, like, you wander around them finding, like, the right uh, item and stuff to get out. Uh, I was hoping it was going to be more Metroidvania. I, I don't know, I... There aren't very many Metroidvania games on the SNES, actually, uh, despite having like Super Metroid, which, you know, kind of like made the genre. Uh, it doesn't actually have like hardly any others, which is strange. And yeah, when I heard about it, I thought, oh, if I found a, another good Metroidvania or something, but no, it, was, I don't know, it wasn't bad, it was just kind of disappointing. Uh, so speaking of Metroidvanias, the next system I guess I'll do is GameCube. Uh, just one game. I don't play that much GameCube. Uh, but it was Metroid Prime. I... I don't know, I didn't really like it. Um, I don't know if I've got... 
have the... Okay, I thought maybe I had written down some notes or anything, but I guess not. Um, yeah, it was... Nope, that looks like a boss or something. Up over here and get some treasure. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess I'll go see what those guys up there were doing. Of course, these guys respawn. No, oh, attack the monkey. I guess that's the one downside of her being like that. Yeah, Metroid Prime. I... I played this just a little bit uh, back when it came out. I never had it, but one of my friends did. Uh, and I think I played it for like an hour or something at his house, and that's my only experience with it. And I, so I played, I think halfway through it this year, and I, I was very disappointed. I didn't like it at all. I much prefer Super Metroid. Uh, yeah, it's very, well, it's very slow. That was my biggest problem with it. Because it's a first-person shooter, there's no, uh, there's no interesting like movement tech you can do like in Super Metroid, and you're so you're just kind of holding forward and jumping occasionally, and that's it. And uh, I know it's just so slow. Uh, like in Super Metroid, if you realize you've got to go like to the other side of the map, it takes you I don't know five minutes maybe to get there at most. In Metroid Prime, it seems to take like 20 minutes to get across the map. Because all the rooms are huge and they take forever to get across because you go so slow. And it's not fun traversal, it's a lot of just moving forward and then occasionally shooting enemies. Seems like a bad idea. Also, there wasn't... The items weren't that interesting. Like, in Super Metroid, you get, you know, the space jump, and the high jump, and, uh... Grapple beam, and, you know, your various... Your ball things and stuff. Uh, that seem to actually... They make a difference in the world, because they actually let you, like, you know, jump higher, or, you know... You know, they actually have some, I don't know, interesting effect. They're not just keys, but in... Uh, or even like the beams, like the ice beam, you freeze enemies and then you can jump on them. Or the wave beam goes through walls. Uh, but in, in Metroid Prime, the beams are all just basically keys for locks. Like you... Uh, you know, there's a, a white door that needs the ice beam. On, you know, a red door that needs the plasma beam or whatever. And that's basically all they're used for. Uh, like, there's, you know, a handful of enemies that maybe one beam does more damage or whatever, but they're not interesting at all. Uh, and, you know, the only other power ups you get are, you know, very situation specific. Like, the spider ball, you can only really use it. Uh, in like the designated spider ball areas. Uh, the morph ball, the only time you're ever going to use it really is the dedicated morph ball areas. Uh, it's it, Everything just seems like it's just keys. All, all you're doing is picking up keys, so you... I don't know, it's just not... I didn't find it any of the items interesting at all. Um, Yeah, also I think it is it is uglier. Like Super Metroid looks amazing. Uh Metroid Prime, it's you know, early 3D 
blurry brown. Yeah, it's blurry brown trying to be realistic. I wonder if Chrono will learn a, like, lightning sword eventually, because he gets, like, fire and ice sword uh, when he's uh, pairing with one of the girls. But he, of course, can't do a combo with himself, so... I hope he's dead soon. again just to be safe because his one attack is very he was doing like 150 or something uh okay it was saying releases electric electrocution energy I never I don't know I just didn't see that before so I didn't know that, like, that's what was happening. He was, uh, when he releases the, uh, he gets released from that, he does the damage to everyone. It's gotta be done soon. I wonder if I should have just kept hitting with lightning, if that would like reset the timer for the uh, the release, and then I would never get hit by that. Should uh, get some more items. here. Balance, I believe. Yep. Okay. Uh, so I... I caught the, the stone? Yeah. So I, I don't know, I ended up just kind of uh, quitting it. Also, there was a couple, I seem to remember there was a couple spots where you can't just, you should be able to just go through, but you can't, so you've got to wait until like a certain point in the story or whatever before something happens and then you can get through. And I, I don't really like that in Metroidvania, so I prefer the world to just be a, like a constant state and the only difference is like your abilities and stuff. Uh, I don't like there being any kind of story or anything tying in. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't know, I didn't really like it. And so I, I don't know. I haven't played Prime 2 or 3. Uh, and I don't know if I ever will. 
I'm not really super hyped to play them if they're kind of like this. Uh, same with like Metroid Prime 4. I when it comes out, I don't think I'll probably get it. Although I, yeah, I never ended up getting uh, Dread. Uh, I just, I don't know. From what I heard, it's a lot more linear than like Super Metroid. And there's a lot more like talking and cutscenes and stuff. That's uh, so why, I, I don't know, I just don't see the point in getting it. Um, like, I don't know, I kind of view Nintendo, they're they're just another developer on, you know, alongside all the other developers. I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's Metroid, it's special or whatever, but like, I just played like Ravi Ruby this year and I think it was, you know, I enjoyed it more than Prime and I'm guessing I probably enjoyed it more than I would have enjoyed Dread. Uh, and so if I don't... You know, if, uh, I think Dread is going to just have a bunch of cutscenes and talking and stuff. Uh, you know, and I'm just going to be annoyed by all that. Uh, then I might as well just keep looking for other Metroidvanias that don't have that. Uh, and I've also heard that there's like, uh, you know, it, it actually kind of restricts you from sequence breaking. Like you, you can sequence break to get the power bombs early. But then it says like, oh, you know, you can't use those yet or whatever until you actually get the... Uh... Okay, yeah, I was reading the text there. Yeah, so it... Uh... Nope. Uh... Yeah, I don't, I'm just, I'm not interested in it really. Uh, maybe if... Well, I was going to say if it ever goes on sale, but it's a first-party Nintendo game, so uh, it's going to be $80 forever. Well, it'll be $80 until it's $200, so uh, probably not ever going to play it. Why? Well, Wait, wait, we're in... Right, this is 10,000. We, we found the Masamune in 6,000, so... Yeah, I don't know. I want to hear from him, like, why his name was etched on it then, if it's from 400 years before this. Maybe we could use the gate key to go forward, like, a day, when it's already fixed. You just never have to wait for anything anymore. Just like, you know, you're waiting in line, uh, I'll just, I'll use the gate key, go forward half an hour. Uh, so we just gotta poke around here and wait for these guys to do it. Okay, they're actually, like, doing stuff. That's neat. Uh, this is... Yeah, this is kind of a cool scene. I'm kind of curious about the Masamune. I don't know if maybe if, if Frog equips it, then that means that's got to be like his strongest weapon, or we just sell it eventually and uh, you know swap it out for like a a platinum sword that's just mass produced somewhere. Yeah, that's what I I don't really like about our, a lot of RPGs. I wish. I wish more did them like did it like Dark Souls, where all the weapons are kind of on balance with each other, uh, but you you power them up, and that way you can still get stronger weapons throughout the game. But like, I, I don't know, it all kind of fits better, I think. Uh, if... 
you know, you're not just selling all your equipment and then buying new equipment that just has like bigger numbers or whatever. Uh, so I've bought the Masamune. You equip it? No. No, that's frog only. Like, they could have it be that, you know, he gets, Frog gets the Masamune, and then you still get other different weapons, but uh, they have, like, different stats. Like, maybe, you know, it has really high attack, but no other benefits, but then he gets another sword that has, like, lower attack, but it increases his defense or something like that. Uh, and then you could power up the Masamune. Uh... Yeah, okay. So let's see, next game I played, uh, I only played one Game Boy Advance game this year, uh, and that was uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! The Eternal Duelist Soul. Uh, I had I had wanted to play a trading card game. Uh, I've played the Pokemon card game a ton back when it came out, and I've played the you know, Pokemon card game 2 a bunch uh, on an emulator, I think it was in college at the time. Uh, and, I don't know, I've played a couple other trading card games and I just kind of felt like playing one. Um, so I looked up, you know, what's a really good one and uh, a lot of people recommended Yu-Gi-Oh! The Eternal Duelist Soul. Uh, I... turns out I just don't like Yu-Gi-Oh! as a card game. Uh, yeah, there's, there's just too many cards that don't do anything. Like... You know, you've got a, car a card that has, you know, a thousand attack and a thousand defense, and then, and that's it. That's all its stats. There's no other, uh, you know, nothing else to it. And then you get another card that's, you know, 1100 and 900, and another card that's 1200 and 1200 or whatever. And that's it for, like, the vast majority of the cards. Like, probably, like, 95% of the monsters are just variations on attack and defense and so you get a lot of cards where it's just this monster is just better than this other monster and you know there are some you get that they have cool effects and you know there's traps and stuff uh, but for the most part it just I don't know it was really disappointing that it was just uh, I go on uh, a frog is in here that it was just like I don't know, different monsters with different numbers, and that was it. And there was no no other interesting stats or attacks or anything. Uh, so yeah, I played through that, I don't know, over a couple hours, and then was like, okay, this is... There's not much to this. Yeah, I don't. I never really played Yu-Gi-Oh much, uh, or really at all, back in the day. I think it it got kind of briefly popular here, and I I don't. I remember just buying like a couple packs of cards, but I never really ended up playing it. It was just okay. These are cool, and I know I watched a couple episodes, and then that was it. Uh, it was kind of the same as Digimon. It uh, never really got popular here. Uh, I think I had one friend who absolutely loved it, and I think I bought like a, I don't know, a starter set of Digimon cards or something. Uh, let's see what's happening here. Oh, Cyrus Frog. I know Frog was a human who got changed. That's why he's a frog, because the pun in Japanese, Kairu, but uh... Anyways, yeah, Digimon, I had bought in like a uh pack of them and I remember I had one friend who absolutely loved them and he had a ton of Pokemon cards and so he was willing to trade like you know I'd give him one Digimon card and he'd give me like 20 Pokemon cards for it so I think I ended up trading that uh, that one like starter set for like 
you know, pr probably hundreds of dollars worth of Pokemon cards from him. Oh, that's, uh... I bet Frog's the... The scrawny guy in the tank top with no weapon or armor or anything. I wonder who that girl was back in the previous scene. There was like a girl standing behind them, but she's not here now. I guess it was like his party. So yeah, I'd want to play another uh, trading card game one time, but uh, like a digital one, like a video game one. I'm not really interested in playing actual one, but uh, yeah, I don't know, sometime, hopefully a better one. I wish they'd make another Pokemon one, but I guess if they did that, it'd probably uh, eat into their, I don't know, maybe they think it's going to eat into their profits for the trading card ice yeah the actual cards or they i think they're doing a digital one now too where you can buy them uh you know digitally uh we well, frogs in the team now right oh can i just can i do that anytime i want Ah, uh, okay, so he's not going to use the Masamune right away. I, I guess that's how they're getting around it. He's just not worthy or whatever. Uh, I gotta remember to equip him with that eventually. I should actually check the... Right, nothing else to equip him with. I guess I'm supposed to take him to see the queen now. Uh... 
Uh, no, I guess the king is with the king and he's on the left. So what was going to happen next? I got Frog, we got the Masamune, uh, we're going to go see the King, Queen, maybe, I don't know, she'll give us... Scarfs are stronger than the uh, gloves. Okay, uh, yeah, I don't know what to do. Uh, I guess because I got the... I guess I'm supposed to just go defeat Magus now. Yeah, I think this is... This is about where I've gotten to before. It said, uh, let's see, he was searching the southern continent for how to defeat Magus. Um, Magus, he was in the cathedral, wasn't he? Or, like, they were worshipping him in here. They had, like, a statue or something. Ah, uh, but no, this isn't... This wouldn't be where it is. I don't think. Oh, uh... Was it the cathedral in one of the other time periods? has been going for an hour and a half anyways. I think what I'll probably do... Uh, I'm probably gonna break... And then just kind of have a check to see what I'm supposed to do now. Because I don't... Normally I would just kind of go around and talk to a bunch of people and stuff, but uh, it's kind of boring to watch, so... to go back in there or not. Yeah, so uh, I can change anywhere I want, apparently. I Before I had trekked all the way back so I could get Luca, but apparently I can just do that anywhere. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to take a little bit of a break and uh, be back shortly.